Today on the Poi Blank Performance YouTube channel, we're after answering the question of why I had that big oil spill come from the driver's side valve cover from our dyno pool where we end up laying down 900 rural horsepower. Now guys, from that video I said one of the two things must have happened. I must have blown up that engine. Most of the time when you blow them up, there's a lot of pressure coming out the crankcase or you kick a rod out. Or I blew up a turbocharger. When you blow up a turbocharger, usually the compressor goes somewhere and everything's rev bang boom, right? Okay, let's dive into that. From that video, I started up the truck. You guys got to hear it. It sounded smooth. Well, after Phil left, then I ended up driving the truck on the dyno. I didn't make another pull, but I drove it. It's like, all right, my confidence is coming up. I feel like the engine's fine. Okay, then I shifted. I was like, I must have blown up one of the two turbochargers. Well, I'm holding the cover of the big turbocharger. Let's dive underneath the hood and see if I actually blew one up. So anytime that you have a turbocharger failure, what's the first thing you're gonna do? Pop the hood of your truck, you're gonna get the compressor housings off. We've got both those off. We're gonna visibly look at the turbochargers. What I'm looking for, I'm looking for oil to be covering everything. This kit is green, there should be oil all over it, and there's not, all right? So we're gonna dive a little closer. We're gonna actually take our finger, we're gonna run it around the compressor housing and to see what we have, because there should be oil all over this guy. Nothing on the big turbocharger, nothing on the little one. Yeah, you've got some oily residue, that's perfectly fine, because we spun them pretty hard. They made 900 horsepower, all right? So if we didn't find any oil there, then the turbo wheels must be locked up, the compressor. We're gonna spin them like a top. They should be smooth. So here we go, spin it. Spins freely. Big turbocharger, appears fine. Small one, spin it, appears to be fine. Okay, well we must have a lot of shaft plate. So I'm gonna grab a hold of the turbocharger. I'm gonna actually pick it up and push it down. We should have very minimal movement, but we should have movement. Big turbocharger, okay, you can hear that just a little bit, totally fine. I didn't grab it, pull it out of there. Next one, up and down, feels fine. Okay, so even inspecting the hot side intercooler pipe where all this air goes into, it looks like it just arrived from powder coating. Still nice and pretty powder coat on the outside, but we're focused on the inside. Still looks like it's sandblasted. We should see black speckles all inside of it. That would show us that oil's getting inside there, and it's not. So if we didn't have a failure on the front of the turbochargers, that builds my confidence up. But it takes my confidence to this. We must have had a failure on the back side of the turbocharger and there's gonna be oil all over the downpipe. So now we're taking a look at the downpipe of the big turbocharger. Right here is the clamp that connects the downpipe to the big turbine housing. I'm gonna take my finger and I should see oil everywhere. You can see I don't have any oil on there. So now I'm gonna pop this clamp off and there should be oil all inside of it if we had a failure on the turbine side. So guys, we're actually seeing some oil, what I didn't want to see come out of the big turbo charger. Now keep in mind, they're both connected. So what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to send both turbo chargers back to the dealer so that way they can check them out and tell us what took place. Now, how did I not catch this the other day after the big dyno pull? So last Friday on the dyno, we just finished up with that 3,500 RPM pull. The exhaust housings are hot. The exhaust is hot. Anything that enters there, which could be oil, will evaporate unless it's an excessive amount and you'll see it as white smoke. We didn't see anything. Everything seemed good. We just had a fluke, right? But yesterday I came in, I was like, I want to build my confidence up a little bit. I want the truck to run for a couple of hours idling on the dyno. I just, I knew that these turbochargers were fine and I knew the engine was fine, but shit happens. That's the reason why we did end it up with a little bit of puddle of oil coming out of the big charger because it was a lot cooler. The oil heated up and it got thinner and it found its way into the exhaust. Ultimately, these turbochargers have to come off and they have to go back to the OEM and get rebuilt and he's gonna tell me what he thinks about it. Now going forward, we are gonna change up a few things. We're gonna change the first thing, we're gonna change the crankcase filter. That way, if we have any kind of back pressure in the oiling system, this will alleviate that. Number two, 
we are going to change the oil. That's only good practice. Number three, we will be changing the oil pressure up on this truck based upon what they want us to do. Now guys, here's the big picture. If you've ever watched the UCC, the ultimate call out challenge, if you've ever watched Sean Baca, he's probably the king of blowing up turbochargers. Thank God that we did see this problem and get it fixed beforehand because we was gonna run the truck again. And guess what happens? If that turbocharger actually let go, the big one, it would have blew out this fender and probably took out that wall. They make a big loud pop and they're shrapnel everywhere. It's a good thing that we got it beforehand. We're gonna send them off. Shit just happens when you're making power. So guys, make for sure, like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, because the next time you see the L5P, it'll be back on the rollers with the same turbochargers.